Any timers running? Hey, what's happening guys? Welcome back to the channel. I know quite a few of you guys are new here. So first off, just a huge shout out for subscribing to the channel. I super appreciate you helping me grow on YouTube. And then uh, just another quick note. If you're not familiar with me t up to this point, my name is Dalton. I'm a Cat 4 rider. I'm based out of San Diego, California. Uh, one thing just to keep in mind is that, like I said, I'm a Cat 4. I'm no bike racing expert. I'm here and I'm learning just like many of you are. And so really, I just want to share with you my race experience, uh, maybe what I think I did well versus what I could have improved upon. And, you know, if you're more experienced, if you're racing in the upper categories, as always, I'd love to hear your thoughts as well. So go ahead and, uh, you know, throw those in the comments if you, if you have thoughts on the race overall. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right into the Majestic Crit uh, Cat 4-5. This is the A race. So this is the first of two races on the day for me. Uh, I previously uploaded what became kind of a controversial B race. Uh, so I can link to that above. I'll put that, uh, I think, in the upper right-hand corner here. If you want to see me just hanging out on the back, kind of like an idiot uh, in a Cat 4-5 race in particular. And then ultimately what happens is I get crashed out. But anyway, uh, if you're interested in that, <laughs> go ahead and check it out at the link above. And so this course, as you can see uh, in the top right, is a seven-corner crit sort of uh the last two corners are actually 45 so if you take them with the proper line then really it just becomes one long sweeper i did have two teammates in this race uh, i had one teammate named justin it's actually his first race ever a uh, huge shout out to justin for hanging in there and completing his first race ever super awesome performance there uh, and then my second teammate in this race uh zach we actually had devised a little bit of a plan before, so my teammate Zach and I had a relatively decent plan, I feel, going into this race. What we really wanted to do uh, is we wanted to make sure we just stuck close to one another first off, and then really uh, we didn't have much interest in getting off the front as most everything in any kind of Cat 4 or 5 crit, especially on a course like this, is probably going to get brought back by a pretty motivated field. Nobody really lets anything stick, and typically nothing stays out there too long. I did want to jump out there just to sort of test the waters, uh, throw some testing attacks, I guess, when it slows down in the beginning of the race, just to really see if the field would kind of let me right away. Uh, spoiler alert, absolutely no chance they were letting that happen. So also on our agenda, I guess you would say, is uh, if late in the race there was sort of an opportunity for both, you know, Zach and I to roll off the front, uh, we agreed that one of us would basically put in the big dig to get some separation. And then the other one of us would basically just sit on that move so that if a counter did come, we were fresh enough to go ahead and cover that uh, in, in any kind of sticky situation. If the late race move did not work, then basically my job was to ensure that Zach was kind of in the top couple wheels with two corners to go so that he could open up his long sprint that he's known for. And then ideally he would be able to come around pretty much everybody that's in front of us uh, and get that dub but uh, I know this is a pretty developed plan for a cat 4 race so let's just go ahead and jump ahead and see how all of it sort of plays out one thing I was pretty happy with overall in this race that I wanted to touch on really quickly is just sort of my ability to move up when we would hit any kind of lull I would maintain the speed especially in this section coming out of that first long straight and then I would basically just expend no watts to slot all the way up to like 5th, 6th wheel and then just jump back in the draft and kind of hang out. So what you see here is actually a solo rider who has jumped off the front and at first I wasn't too concerned with this. Solo riders are typically not going to stay away but you know you hear some strange things happening in Cat 4 or 5 and he had actually increased his gap on us quite a bit. Uh, if you look at it, we're only rolling at maybe 21, 22 miles an hour. So everybody kind of peels off the front. I'm left in the wind and I decided, you know what? I'll do majority of the work and just go ahead and sort of shut this down. Uh, little did I know that I had a gap hanging out behind me. <laughs> maybe I should have just jumped up there and bridged to this guy and we could have worked together, but you know, ultimately, it probably would have been brought back. I, I wasn't trying to go for, you know, 25 laps of this race with one other rider. That's just a tough sell for me. So I did a lot of work to start the effort to bring this back. And as you can see, we're, we're patching it up now and finishing the job. 
Alright, jumping ahead here. There really hasn't been much going on. It's just been sort of me surfing the top 20 wheels, riding in the pack. There have been a couple lackluster attacks. The whole group is pretty motivated to close those down. It's mid-race, so not a whole lot going on. One thing, though, that uh, I want to call out here is this rider on the right starts to go. They put in a big effort, and I'm thinking, okay, uh, the makeup of this group looks interesting. Uh, these riders have been riding at the front all day long. I actually just said, let it go, if you heard me in the uh, actual audio from the race. And then this go fast rider comes across too, and I'm thinking, okay, uh, this is decent enough potential. But the problem is, is as soon as they all got across to each other, there was like five or six of them, they immediately sat up. So there's no sense in me trying to bridge to this. Now in this situation, one thing I do like to do is when you bring back a group, that is sitting up like this instead of just latching onto their rear wheel I'm gonna go ahead and put in another effort here and I'm gonna make some people work so you can see I counter attack that move I come around here and I, I'm just sort of drilling on the front and actually uh, I believe this this rider behind me is a junior but uh, he rode super strong all day he's a cinch rider and he came through immediately starts taking a pull and I was actually a little bit encouraged because I knew we had a pretty decent gap and then the rider behind me in my rear cam here, I know if he gets across to us, he'll definitely work with us. A uh, super strong novice guy that uh, I've actually seen up in Chowchilla as well. And so I'm actually hoping that he gets on, and then uh, as soon as he latches on here, I feel like we can maybe jump into a rotation, and something like this could last for quite a while. It gets a little bit better when we pick up this Go Fast Rider. I didn't realize that he had actually jumped across the previous group. Oh, yeah. If you listen to me here, I thought that the field had closed the gap and the rider behind me tells me we still have a gap. So I go ahead, I pull through and I start pushing the watts again. Um, looking back a little bit here, I'm not exactly committed just because I, I did see that the field was chasing pretty hard and we're only doing like 23 miles an hour here and I'm at 350 watts. So just we weren't committed enough to make it happen and it's all back together here and as you can see the field starts to come around and we're caught and since i'm a relentless psychopath uh, every time the field slows down i like to just throw haymakers and as you can see we're slowing down here this section for some reason was always super slow man everybody's getting a drink and when i see everybody tired getting a drink right after bringing back anything i'm like ah oh, this is it this is money let's go for it so <laughs> I'm gonna keep things interesting, man. I just, you know, I get bored when we're doing 20 something miles an hour and, you know, nobody's throwing attacks or moves or anything like that. So at the very least, I'll, I'll throw kind of a, a half ass attack like that just to get everybody motivated, perk everyone up, and, and make some people work. Now, remember, I'm not saying that this is a good idea. <laughs> In fact, it's probably a terrible idea because, you know, I'm sitting here burning matches. Um, but, you know, like I said in the video, you know, you got to keep it interesting. Uh, got to get some of these guys that are going to be contesting that field sprint later. I want them to work. That way, Zach, he's been hanging out in the pack all day long. He's done absolutely nothing to this point. He's just been hanging out. So hopefully I've made a few people work just by throwing some attacks. And he's 100% fresh, and hopefully he's going to have a huge sprint at the end of this thing. Now we're getting somewhere interesting in the race. We just came out of that long straightaway, and as you can see, things are sort of slinking up here. You got the guy off to the left just sitting up, riding one-handed, hanging out, and nobody's really driving the pace on the front. We're within like 10 to 12 minutes left in this race, so I'm like three, four laps to go. This is the exact time I talked about with Zach. If something presents itself, I'm going to go for it. So I go ahead and ramp it up here. I'm doing 33 miles an hour to get that initial surge, get the gap. And I actually thought initially I had brought Zach with me, but I didn't. So I look back, I had a solo gap. Immediately the entire field is chasing them. And actually what was good about this and maybe bad is uh, Zach did come out of the pack with me along with a couple other riders that are pretty strong riders. And so they pass me here. I tell them drill it. I jump on. And then I'm pretty sure I scream at these guys. I'm like, hey, get on his wheel, get on his wheel. And just just so we keep it tight. And then basically I look back and I realize that everybody's immediately on us. So no getting away within the lap cards. I told Zach, shut it down, he's caught. And so he pretty much just sits up on the front. I sit up, I'm not doing any work. If he just so happens to roll away by himself, that'd be nice. But 
Didn't look like that was gonna happen. The field's right here. So at this point, this is when we knew this thing is gonna be a field sprint. Nobody's getting away from this. If we couldn't get away right there with the gap and the surge that I put in, then it probably wasn't gonna happen for the rest of this race. So time to go ahead and jump to the last lap here. We're gonna check out how the end of this race unfolds. So here we are, it's the last lap and we're in a little bit of a lull here. If you look at my rear cam, you can see I actually picked Zach up just after the first straightaway. I came around him, had him slot in on my wheel and now it's go time. So basically my whole job at this point is to cover any big flyers like that or anything that looks really threatening, make sure we keep the speed matched and that I go ahead and any gaps that open up, I'm closing those down. I'm dragging Zach to the front here and I gotta keep him in you know, the top 10 wheels or so and ideally even better than that as we come into just a few corners to go. So we're coming down this little straightaway. This is a headwind straight here and then we'll be making a right hander. So I'm staying just kinda just behind these riders but we're a little bit too far back for my liking. So coming into this right hander, I'm actually gonna dive underneath here and I'm bringing Zach with me. Yeah, so, so much so that I sucked my knee out there and I ended up hitting the cone. Um, but I guess you gotta do what you gotta do. But I'm sticking my nose in the wind here. I'm doing 7, 800 watts to match the speed and I'm sort of just staying towards the front, keeping us out of the washing machine and the mess back there. But you know, these guys are drilling it. Uh, they're going for it. So I think in my power profile, I did something like 550 average for like the last half of the lap or something ridiculous. So. Here we go. Uh, we just made the first of the final three corners. And I asked Zach if he's there. He says, yeah, I know we're in a pretty good spot here. The only problem is, is there's too much distance from Zach's front wheel to the front of this race. Here's a huge missed opportunity actually, which I will rewind and we will reflect on that. But uh, let's go ahead and just go into this final straight. As you can see, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six riders in front. And then I open up wide, let Zach come underneath me. And this man is an absolute monster. He is just coming around full gas. I think he put out something like 1200 watts for 20 seconds. And you can see him, he's, he's drilling it. And he's behind two riders still. And then this rider in third posts up huge and gets passed by both Zach and uh, Brian of Velo Kings actually ended up with the win. But yeah, teammate Zach took second. Um, Great overall result. I, I should have dropped him off a little better um, than I did. So I do want to run back to those final two corners real quick and just show you guys that again because there was an opportunity there that I missed. And looking back at this now, uh, we could have executed a little bit better on that. Running it back, here we are. We're coming into the second to last corner. And this is just so textbook. They open wide here and I definitely had an inside line. I could have come underneath right here and then basically brought Zach up to like second wheel honestly i could have been on the front of this train and could have dropped him off probably seven eight wheels in front of where we're at right now and then he would not have had to sprint around me he wouldn't have had to sprint around the four or five other riders that were in front of us and he would have easily locked up the win with the power that he put down in this situation so i think this was basically a guaranteed dub uh this is on me not coming underneath when we had the opportunity obviously hindsight's 2020 20, but uh, I ended up coming across the line 13th or something. Zach took second. Overall, a decent result. But hey, Cat 4, you live and you learn. That's what it's all about as we get our category upgrades. And speaking of, uh, pretty sure Zach went ahead and secured his Cat 3 upgrade here. So huge ups to him. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and smash that like button for me. If you're new to the channel and you've not been here before, go ahead and subscribe. Uh, if you want to see more content like this, some scenic cycling routes down here in SoCal or really anything else cycling related. As always, thanks for watching, and I will see you soon.